Let's take a look at our first example. We're going to evaluate this expression. 4 minus 1 half x for x equaling negative 8. Now all we have to do is make a quick substitution. And that is, we're going to take this negative 8 and substitute it into x for the expression 4 minus 1 half x. Let's write that down. 4 minus 1 half, and remember in place of x, we're going to write in or substitute the value negative 8. So it looks like that. Now this takes us back to an order of operations problem. Remember to simplify using the order of operations, we have to do multiplication or division from left to right before we do addition or subtraction. So we're not going to subtract 4 minus 1 half, but we are going to multiply 1 half times negative 8. Again, since we're multiplying a fraction times an integer, we can make this integer into a fraction by putting it over 1. Now when we multiply these two fractions, let's cancel out or divide out any common factors just to make the multiplication more easy. So we see that 2 and 8 have a common factor of 2. 2 divides into 2 one time, 2 divides into 8 four times. So what do we have here? We have the 4 up front. And notice, let's check the sign. We're doing multiplication, so we count the number of negative signs, 1, 2. 2 is an even number, so that tells us we're going to have a positive product. So that gives us positive. In our numerator, we have left 1 times 4, which is 4. And notice the denominator is just 1 times 1, or 1 so we don't need that denominator of 1. So that brings us to 4 plus 4, which we all know is 8. And that does it. Just remember, to begin to simplify, take whatever value you're given and substitute it into the expression, use the order of operation here, and then it comes right down to a very simple solution. Let's take a look at our next two problems. We're going to evaluate for x equals negative 3, for negative x to the fourth, and negative x in parentheses to the fourth power. Here again is a case where we have to be very careful because these little parentheses here, although it may not look significant, makes a significant difference in the evaluation process. So let's begin. As before, we're going to use x equals negative 3. We're going to use the substitution method take the negative 3 and substitute it in for x. When we do, now notice this negative's out front, not in the parentheses with x, so it stays that way. Negative x is negative 3. So it looks like this, negative 3, there's my x, to the fourth power. Be very careful here, because you might be tempted to put this negative inside the parentheses with a negative 3, which would be the incorrect solution, so be very cautious. Again, here's the negative sign that was with the original expression. Here's the negative 3 that came for the substitution. Now let's evaluate this first part here, negative 3 to the fourth power, means I have negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 or four negative threes. Again, let's count the number of negative signs to see whether we have a positive or a negative product. In this case, don't forget to count the one out front. We have one, two, three, four, five negative signs. So that's going to give me a negative product. Again, the one out front counts because it did not go inside the parentheses. We have one, two, three, four, five. Now the rest of it is just to multiply these 3's. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3, 81. So the final simplification of negative x to the fourth power is negative 81. Now let's try this next problem, which is very similar to the first one, but being noticing here that the big difference is the negative sign here is now inside the parentheses. How does that change our problem? Well, what we're going to do is still take our negative 3 and we're going to substitute it in the parentheses right there. 
So that gives me the negative notice on the inside. The x is the negative 3. All this is raised to the fourth power. Let's go through that part once more because I know this can be a little bit confusing. We have negative x inside the parentheses to the fourth power. Here's the negative sign from the original expression. I'm going to take the negative 3, which, what, which is what x is equal to, and substitute it in for my x here. Negative x is negative 3. So it looks this way, negative, negative 3 to the fourth power. Now we all know that if we have two negatives in a row like this inside, a negative and a negative, the product becomes positive. So this here simplifies to 3 to the fourth power. In fact, notice that our negative signs in the second example are all gone. And that's because the parentheses here force the negative to go with the negative 3, which when combined together gives us a product of positive 3, because remember, two negatives, count the number of negative signs, 2, an even number, yields a positive product. So now let's continue. We have just simply 3 to the fourth power. We can cheat just a little bit by looking back up here. We already did 3 to the fourth. We know that that product happens to be 81. So 3 to the fourth is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which as we just said, is a product of 81. Notice, most importantly, that's positive 81 versus in our first example where we had negative 81. Again, the big difference, this negative is not a part of the base. This is just like x raised to the fourth power with a negative out front. In the second example, the negative is part of my base, so it goes inside the parentheses as negative, negative 3, or positive 3 raised to the fourth power for a product of positive 81. Let's take a look at our next example. We're going to find the area of a triangle with an altitude of 3 meters and a base of 7 meters. When approaching a problem that involves a geometric shape, it's really nice to draw a picture of whatever we're trying to find so we can label the information that's given to us. So let's start out by drawing a triangle. Now we were given the altitude, so let's draw the altitude. Remember, the altitude is a line that's perpendicular to the base from the opposite vertex. So put in the box, remember that means that it's a right angle there. So the altitude here is 3 meters, we'll mark it 3. And the base is 7 meters, that's the length of the segment down here at the bottom. Now that we have the diagram, what we want to do is find the area or the, the portion, if we were to color this in, of this shape right here. Now let's recall the formula for the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle, remember, is equal to 1 half times the base times the height. We have all that information, so let's just go ahead and substitute. Base, 7. So the area of our triangle is 1 half base, 7. And height is another word for altitude, which we found to be 3 here. So we'll substitute the value in 3 for h. Again, let's go through that again, because I know that sometimes it's difficult to follow these formulas. The formula for the area of the triangle is 1 half times the base times the height. This 3 here, or the segment labeled with 3, represents the height or the altitude of this triangle. The segment that it's perpendicular to at the bottom is referred to as the base. That has length 7. So what we did was took these two values, substituted it into our formula for the length of the base, 7, and the height, 3. The rest of it is just simple multiplication. So let's do this. We have 1 half. Let's go ahead and multiply the 7 times the 3 first, because that's easier. 1 half, 7 times 3 is 21. And then finally, again, if we're going to multiply a fraction times this integer. Let's make this integer into a fraction as 21 over 2. Excuse me, 21 over 1. We'll multiply numerators together. 1 times 21 is 21. 2 times 1 is 2. 
So we can tell that our area is 21 over 2, but that's probably not the way we would see that solution. 21 over 2, we'll change it to a mixed number. Do you remember how to do that? To change this improper fraction to a mixed number, we take 2, divide it into 21, which would give us 10, and the remainder is 1, or we write it as 1 half. So the area of our triangle is 10 and 1 half. Now since we were in meters, and we're multiplying a meter times a meter, 7 represents 7 meters, 3 representing 3 meters, meter times meter is equal to meters square or square meters. So we can write it in this fashion if you'd like. So the area of this triangle that has the altitude of 3 and the base of 7 is 10 and 1 half square meters.